first of all, I want to thank Madhu for the invitation. You know, I actually uh, don't travel over weekends because I treasure my time with my daughter. So I act, she's with me here because on Saturdays I take her to her dance class and then to the badminton class. So I lied to her. I said, there's going to be a Ghazals program in the evening. You have to go. She said, what is a Ghazal? I said, this is the latest hip hop. You know, you go to iTunes, you'll find it there. She said, can I dance to it? I said, everybody's going to dance. So I hope some of you will dance in the evening. When are going to dance. Otherwise, she's going to kill me. Uh, the second point I want to make is, uh, I am from the industry, and I'm not ashamed about it. You know, so I, I agree entirely with what has been said before, but I am a card-carrying industry person who has spent all my careers discovering, inventing, innovating, and hoping that something will come out that will help mankind. So yeah, I have a strong industry bias, all right? So uh, I want to tell you a story about statins. Uh, I, I guess some of you know what statins are. So these are uh, oral pills that you take and they lower your cholesterol. So why should you lower your cholesterol? Cholesterol is actually, you can imagine a clean pipe that supplies water, right? And if that pi pipe is clogged, water supply will not happen. Your arteries are very similar to that. They are clean pipes that actually supply blood to different vessels. And when they get clogged, then cholesterol is one of the culprits in causing that clogging, then depending on the tissue that is clogged, if it's the heart, it's a heart attack. If it's in the, one of the vessels in the brain, it's a stroke. If it's in the kidney, it's hypertension. So this clogging of arteries is what cholesterol causes. So how do you prevent that? So the cholesterol in the blood is carried uh, in a vehicle called LDL or low density particles. So you essentially have to lower the levels of LD in your blood to lower your cholesterol to prevent, you know, some of the diseases I talked about. So statins are those drugs. How do statins work? And this is back to the basics. The discovery of statins was based on some Nobel Prize winning from the labs of Dr. Brown and Goldstein in University of Texas. Beautiful, beautiful works. Fundamental, beautiful work. I actually fell in love and I spent a few weeks in their lab and it was an amazing. So what they found was cholesterol biosynthesis, there's a rate limiting enzyme called HMG coeriductase. If you block the synthesis of that, cholesterol levels begin to go down. What really happens is the LDL receptors, you know, I talked about the vehicle that carries cholesterol, the LDL. Those are actually taken up by the liver and that's how your cholesterol goes down. Their fundamental work showed that if you <coughs> inhibit HMG coeriductase enzyme, LDL receptors in the liver and all over the body will go up. Your LDL is actually taken up and that's how you lower cholesterol. So that was the classically beautiful and uh, those of you who are students should actually go and read some of the papers. You know, they are so well written, they are so articulately written, and the rigor by which that work was done, uh, it was just an amazing experience for me just to go <laughs> Strongly recommend reading about the Nobel Prize winning work by Brown and Goldstein. Okay, just write that down, all of you students. It's beautiful work. So that's how uh, uh, they happen. So we have, uh, so the importance of fundamental science in saving human lives is unquestionable. I don't think there is even an argument to say that, you know, the two are not connected. I mean, the basis of every single medicine we have today is basic research. Industry does not spend any money on basic research. I mean, that's the fact of the matter. We are in the business of making medicines that hopefully will help humankind and we make some money. It's as simple as that, okay? No disrespect to anybody or any work that's been done. Every piece of work uh, discovery that is being done in the industry is based on basic fundamental work. Okay, so no confusion about that. All right. So uh, there are seven statins now on the market. Uh, I happen to work on one of them. It is called a Torostatin Lipitor. I finished my postdoc. Uh, I got my basic training. Okay, I did a PhD and then a postdoc at Columbia University. And then joined Park Davis Pfizer in the U.S. 
the project I was assigned to was discovery of statins. And uh, we were going to launch the sixth statin, or fifth, I think, atorvastatin was the fifth statin. And there was a lot of concern, you know, how can you be selling a fifth statin? I mean, there are already four statins. It doesn't make business sense. Really, why would a patient buy a fifth statin unless you color it blue or whatever, you know? So why would we do that? So I was really hired to be able to, in the uh, industry, we call it differentiation profile. So what that basically means that the drug that you discover has to offer some additional benefit over other similar drugs to the patient. That's called a differentiated product profile. So I was hired to see if we could differentiate a turbostatin from the existing ones. And long story short, we were able to find some differentiations. Uh, the management was actually not happy at all. They, you know, the, as, as you just heard, the business people are taking over. Marketing people will come and say, I don't think we can sell this unless you show me in real life, in human trial, that this is differentiated. So we had to beg with the management, and there's a book about statins, and there's a chapter on this, on how we had to beg for a Toro statin to move into clinical trials, because clinical differentiation is really what matters. You, know, you can do all the work in animals, but to a sales pitch, it's really what happens in the human. So early, very early on, we did clinical trial. The management said only one trial is all we are giving you. Here's $8 million. You do one trial. If you're able to show what you said you can show, you're on. Otherwise, all of you will have to do a different project. So we took the risk. I mean, we had no choice. We had spent, I had spent eight years of my life there. So we took the risk, did the clinical trial, and lo and behold, showed that unlike other statins that were already on the market, a total statin not only decreased LDL cholesterol, it also decreases triglycerides. Mechanism was not known. I mean, we can make up stories about the mechanism. We don't know. But very lucky for us, we were able to satisfy management and marketing people that a torvastatin can be sold. And the way you will sell it is you will go to your sales rep, will go to the physician and say, sir, you know, don't use pravastatin or simvastatin. You use a torvastatin because the patient gets additional benefit. You can not only lower LDL cholesterol, you actually lower the triglycerides also. So that was the sales pitch that, the, that we were able to sell. And a torvastatin, believe it or not, till today is the largest selling drug known to man. Peak sales of $17 billion. Over 50 million lives saved because of heart attack. It was a truly a magnificent story, really. I mean, I felt like I was in heaven because I never imagined that I would, you know, and this was pure luck. I mean, I'm not a brilliant scientist. I, I just, an average scientist who happened to be there in the right place. So that differentiation was very, very important for us to do. So is a Toro statin all good? No. Actually, now we are finding out that statins have one major problem with statins always has been they call what's called rhabdomyolysis. It's a muscle, uh, you know, you get muscle ache. It doesn't happen in everybody, but happens more often in Indians for some reason. The other thing you we found out that, and this happens with drugs, once they have been on the market for 10 years, you start finding new things that you never did before. And so we are finding out with the whole class of statins now, if they predispose you to uh, diabetes. So the increase in risk is up to 15%. So if you take an individual who's a non-diabetic and another individual who's a non-diabetic but put on a statin to lower cholesterol, you will see the propensity to get type 2 diabetes increasing. So yeah, so there are some issues with statins that are showing up now. And I think there is a strong need for the next generation cholesterol uh, lowering medicines. I know that Madhu's group has a program on that, and it's a very exciting program, actually. But getting back to the statins, why are we not taking off of the market? I mean, if they are going to cause diabetes, just looking at a snapshot, why is the physician still recommending it? Because most diabetics die of cardiovascular disease. 
and statins have been shown overwhelmingly to really prevent heart disease, heart attack. So the risk-benefit ratio for a physician for a patient is still very strongly in favor of prescribing a statin. So to my mind, statins are never going to go away. They'll always be there because, as I said, the risk-benefit is strongly in the favor of prescribing it to prevent uh, to prevent heart disease. So I think those are not going to go away at all. So, you know, this was, uh, I'm saying back in, this was in 1992 that I was there, and I think Lipitor was launched in maybe 2003. So the business side of it was, Park Davis was a small company. I didn't have a sales force. When you have a drug that can make you $17 billion, you also have it to have a sales force that will go sell it. Right? But there was no Amazon those days where you could get online and order. Salespeople had to go and market it to different physicians. And here, in this case, it has to be a general practitioner that you have to go to to, to really uh, sell a statin. So we needed a lot of sales force. We only had 2,000 sales force, 2,000 sales persons. So clearly, uh, management figured out that we cannot exploit this to its full extent. If we only deal with, if we are only going to sell it ourselves. So they entered into a relationship with Pfizer. And the, really, the deal was Pfizer will pay them $80 million a year and keep the rest. But they had 20,000 salespeople in this case. So a 10 time increase in the potential sales. I think it was $80 million for every billion dollars the drug made or so. And the relationship was great, you know, Park Davis was happy, they were making money, Pfizer was making a lot more money and all that. Then Pfizer management figured out, you know, when we can buy the cow, why should we be buying the milk? So what they decided was, let us buy our Park Davis. It was the most hostile takeover I ever saw. They went to the court, they fought all the way, finally Pfizer bought out Park Davis. They bought the cow. They didn't want to be paying for the milk anymore. And at that time, all of us were asked to leave. So that's how life is, you know. I mean, sometimes you don't know where it's going to go, but very exciting times I had. And it was all because my fundamental basic science was very strong, being having done a PhD and a postdoc. And the fact that, you know, Brown and Goldstein had described all the work, the, the cholesterol lowering pathway in order to help. So, I think, I mean, there is no question and no doubt that basic science, fundamental science, is the basis for everything the industry does. I don't think industry spends too much time. So, thank you very much for your time.